This is Winning Cures Everything. Here's your host, Gary Seegers. Welcome in. It is the March 8th edition of the show. It's Friday. We got a lot to talk about. I am Gary Seegers, your host. You can follow me on Twitter at GaryWCE. You can follow the show at Winning Cures or on Facebook, facebook.com slash Winning Cures Everything. Or the easy way to go about it, just go to winningcureseverything.com. It's got everything you need. Subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe on your favorite podcast app. Let's jump in. Uh, The rundown for today's show, Will Wade officially suspended by the school. I'm going to talk about why maybe I would not have done that. Uh, Then we're going to talk about the big games in college basketball for this weekend. Uh, Got a lot of bubble games, a lot of games that could determine who ends up making the NCAA tournament. Uh, and then, of course, there's some really big games that uh, that people should be paying attention to. And I've got college basketball picks for this evening. Uh, as always, you can get the picks over on the website, uh, winningcureseverything.com. The show, as always, brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They've got six incredible sports books. You can find them all over at tunicatravel.com. It's got information on all of them. Chris and myself will be at Sam's Town Casino in Tunica, March 21st, March 22nd. That's a fri- uh, Thursday and a Friday. That is the first two days of the NCAA tournament. We want everybody to come out, hang out. We're spending the night in, at uh, Samstown on that Thursday night, so we're going to watch basketball literally from the time it starts on Thursday until the time it is done on Friday night, which will probably be around 11.30, midnight, somewhere around there. We are going to be there all day, both days. Come hang out with us. Get you a room, stay around, hang out, drink some drinks, get some food. They've got awesome deals on their food and beverages in the Samstown Sportsbook. It's fantastic. Make sure you come out March 21st, March 22nd, the first two days of the NCAA tournament, and hang out. We're broadcasting live at 10 a.m. on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, uh, both of those days. And then we're going to do an afternoon show before the afternoon slate starts. So make sure you come out March 21st, March 22nd at Samstown in Tunica, Let's jump into this. Will Wade officially suspended by LSU. Now, the statement that came out said, Recent media reports regarding Coach Will Wade are without question concerning to us all, uh, which was stated by the President Chancellor F. King Alexander and Athletic Director Joe Oliva. As such, we and university officials have taken deliberate and purposeful steps to fairly assess and adequately address the situation. As we have done since media reports first surfaced months ago, we are closely coordinating with the NCAA for every step. They will have our full cooperation, and we will continue to report to them all facts and information on this matter. All of us at LSU share the obligation to protect the integrity of this institution. As such, we have suspended head coach Will Wade indefinitely until such time as we can ensure full compliance with the NCAA as well as institutional policies and standards. Assistant coach Tony Benford will assume the duties of interim coach. Now, let's let's talk about for just a minute. They're suspending the coach, but the player that was talked about in all of this is still going to play, right? So Smart, who is the freshman point guard that plays behind Tremont Waters, but has been absolutely on fire here lately. I mean, he killed Tennessee. Had 28 points in that game when when Waters was out. uh, He has been playing insanely well, but they don't mention anything about that. So we're not going to suspend the kid. We're going to suspend the coach. Why would you not do both? I mean, interesting question, right? Interesting question. Uh, The other side of this is, why would you cooperate with the NCAA on anything? Now, yesterday, of course, I said that I don't think that he'll be able to survive this. But today, I'm thinking, you are at a spot where this team could legitimately make a Final Four. Maybe LSU should do what Arizona did last year. Suspend him for one game, look into things, keep him away from the microphone, this week while everything has blown up, right? Because all of this stuff has come up Thursday afternoon, Friday, and then they've got a game Saturday, a game that they can win against Vanderbilt whether he's on the bench or not. 
Vanderbilt's riding an 18-game losing streak. They are 0-17 in the SEC, and they're playing in Baton Rouge. So I could go out there and coach tomorrow, and LSU would win the ballgame. I mean, that's how that goes. So if I'm LSU, and I've got a chance for an insanely special season, you got the SEC tournament coming up, you got the NCAA tournament coming up, bring back Bill, uh, Will Wade for the SEC tournament. Arizona last year suspends Sean Miller after all these reports come out for one game against Arizona. And then they don't suspend DeAndre Aiden. And then they come back and Sean Miller leads them to an NCAA tournament. Now they got blasted by Buffalo in the NCAA tournament, but you still brought back Sean Miller. And he's coaching this year. Now everybody assumes he's probably going to get fired at the end of the season anyway. We think. I mean, but he does have the number one recruiting class in the country coming in next year. So we'll see. The NCAA kind of will have to force their hand here. But if you already know that the season is shot, Smart has played in every game this year. If you already know the season is shot, you're going to have to vacate everything anyway. Why not just play it out? That's what Auburn did back in 2010 with Cam Newton. Just play the whole thing out, see what happens, bring your coach back, Don't suspend the kid. See what happens. And if later on down the line they end up having to take the banner down, who cares, right? Because this season is already done anyway. You might as well. Um, Cooperating with the NCAA, we have already seen that that does not work. You know who else cooperated with the NCAA? Ole Miss football. They cooperated. You saw what happened to them. Missouri football. They cooperated. You saw what happened to them, right? Missouri football gets a a bowl ban basically for a rogue athletic uh, tutor. Ole Miss gets two years of bowl bans. All of their kids get to transfer. They end up having to hire an interim coach because they can't find anybody to come in and coach the football team. Like, it's a disaster. They cooperated. They Both of them had exemplary cooperation is what the NCAA said. You know who ended up fighting the NCAA? Auburn football with Cam Newton. They still got a national championship. Arizona with Sean Miller. They still made the NCAA tournament last year. They did their thing. North Carolina with the academic scandal. They said, make us come out and show where this was an athletic advantage. Right? With LSU, fight them. I understand that the NCAA doesn't have, like, it's not a a court of law. They can do whatever they want to. But if they're going to do whatever they want to anyway, bring Will Wade back in. Play out the season. See what happens. Throw all your cards out there. And let's go. Now, obviously, I'm not an LSU fan. But the smart thing for LSU to do here is not to just lay down on the season. Now, they've already come out and said, because they were asked by the New Orleans Advocate, uh, they were asked afterwards if uh, they were going to sit out the SEC tournament and sit out the NCAA tournament. And they said, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. If you're not doing that, bring the coach back. Nothing, in, like, obviously, the evidence is incredibly damning, right? I mean, the, the statements that came out in Mark Schleyball's article yesterday on ESPN were way out there. Talking about uh, uh, compensating kids more than the NBA rookie minimum and how he's done deals like this in the past for comparable players and all this. Like, obviously, this is all stuff that is really hard to explain away. But if you got a legal defense and you can find a way to get out of it because there's no numbers talked about, there's no actual money, and I mean, where do you go from there, right? Suspend them for this game. Bring them back for the tournaments. Put all your cards out there. Tell the NCAA to put theirs down, too. Like, and we'll see what happens. Because more often than not, the NCAA doesn't have enough to go on. In this, yeah, it all sounds really, really bad. You know what else sounded really, really bad? Miami football with Nevin Shapiro. Something can get screwed up. Put your coach back out there. Let's see what happens. Who cares about integrity in this sport? None of the coaches do. 
all of the players are getting paid anyway. Bring him back. Bring Will Wade back. Let him go through this. Finish what you started. LSU, don't be dumb. Do not cooperate. You know how this ends up working. Next one up, big games weekend. There's a ton of bubble games. Ton of bubble games, and I am excited, right? Because Selection Sunday is, what, nine days away from today, Friday, March 8th. So next Sunday, we are all over this thing. Here's what we got this weekend, games you need to pay attention to to see who's going to make the tournament. NC State at Boston College. NC State lost to a shorthanded Georgia Tech team. Cost us a money line parlay the other night, by the way. Uh, but NC State on the road at Boston College. Look, their strength of schedule is awful. It is terrible. Uh, NC State needs this one badly. Badly. Clemson at home against Syracuse. Look, Clemson, can uh, they have very few good wins. They need this win over Syracuse. If they lose this one at home, even if it's a one-point loss like most of the other ones have been, you do not want to lose this game if you're Clemson because you'll find a way to get off the bubble, and it'll be on the wrong side of it. Alabama at Arkansas. This has turned into a quad one game for Alabama. Arkansas, slowly but surely, they're up to 16-14. and 14. It's a road game. Alabama has not looked good. Obviously, they've gotten beat at home by Auburn and home by LSU the last two games. You go on the road, you beat Arkansas, some of that can be forgiven. And they're sitting at 3-8 and eight in quad one wins. You win this one, you move to 4-8. and eight. Not too shabby, and then you got a chance at a quad one in the SEC tournament. So, next up, Florida at Kentucky. Now, Florida has a lot of losses right now, same as Alabama. Alabama at Arkansas, a little bit easier than Florida at Kentucky. Kentucky still playing for a chance, a small chance, but a chance at an SEC championship game. Florida probably not going to win that game. Uh, they need to – I doubt they will win this one anyway. Uh, but they'll probably need to win at least a game, maybe two in the SEC tournament. TCU at Texas. That seems like a play-in game. Texas already got 14 losses. Uh, that's that's so many losses. <laughs> I mean, it, last year you had Alabama get in with a really strong strength of schedule. But if Texas loses at home to TCU and then they lose again the next week in the uh, Big 12 tournament, not going to be a good thing. Same with TCU. They've been trending down lately. That could end up being a play-in game. St. John's at Xavier. Xavier had won five games in a row. They were trending on the right side of the bubble, and then they go and lose at Butler, which is not a death nail. But you got a home game against St. John's, who is also a bubble team right now. St. John's strength of schedule in their non-conference. Other than Duke, pretty terrible. Pretty awful. St. John's uh, and Xavier both need a win. That could end up being a playing game. And then Villanova at Seton Hall in the Big East. Seton Hall needs another another big win. Win over Villanova would do it. They got a win over Marquette. Marquette, of course, is on a slide right now. They are not looking good. Uh, Villanova, they win this one. I mean, they win the Big East outright. So they, they need this. Creighton versus DePaul. Creighton needs this. They've won four straight after losing four straight. Their strength of schedule on the season is crazy. Creighton, if they can win this one, they can find themselves trending in the right direction. They're already one of the uh, the first four out. So, depending on what happens with these others, go from there. Then we got three more. Georgetown at Marquette. Uh, obviously, Marquette not playing well. Georgetown just got blasted by DePaul last week. It was like 101 to 69 or something. I mean, just destroyed the other night. Uh, so, they need a big win and a win at Marquette, which would be a major league quad one win. Yeah, that's a big one. Indiana versus Rutgers. Rutgers not great, but they have played insanely well as of late. Uh, Indiana, I mean, they are they got six quad one wins. You get this one at home, you know, you go and win one game in the uh, in the Big Ten tournament. We'll see what happens. Arizona State at Arizona. Arizona State. Everybody thinks they should be in because it would be only the uh, second team from the Pac-12. If they lose at Arizona, I mean, that is a major league problem, especially going into the Pac-12 tournament. Arizona State needs to win this game. Finally, the uh, the big games, North Carolina versus Duke, number three versus number four. 
Uh, this is basically a battle for a number one seed. We're going to see whether or not Zion Williamson comes back for this game or if he comes back for the ACC or if he comes back at all, right? We'll see. But uh, but that I think it will be appointment television if he's back. Probably should be appointment television whether he's not uh, or whether he is or not. So Tennessee at Auburn, Tennessee playing for a share of the SEC championship game. If LSU were to lose to Vanderbilt and Tennessee beats Auburn, Tennessee wins the SEC championship game. Or championship, sorry. Cincinnati versus Houston, uh, basically playing for a share of the AAC championship. Uh, And they're fighting for the one or two seed on that one. Michigan versus Michigan State. If Purdue were to lose to Northwestern, uh, one of these is playing for the outright Big Ten championship. If Purdue beats Northwestern, one of them is playing for a tie or a share of the championship, however you want to say it. So big games this weekend, a lot of fun basketball. We are officially in March. It is time to party. Let's go on and jump into the college basketball picks. I've got five picks tonight and then another Moneyline parlay. Uh, we're We're trying to have a little fun with it as we go into college basketball, the ending of it with the tournaments and whatnot. Uh, tonight... Here are my picks. I've got Central Michigan, minus three at Western Michigan. I've got Drake, minus two at home against Illinois State. Eastern Michigan, plus ten at Toledo. Yale, minus one at Penn. Southern Illinois, minus two uh, at home against Northern Iowa. And then here's the Moneyline Parlay. Okay? I've got Maryland, Virginia Tech, Buffalo, Toledo, and VCU. Not too shabby. So that right there will actually be plus uh, 130. Plus 130 with those three, or it may be a little more, plus 133, 134, whatever. But Maryland, Virginia Tech, Buffalo, Toledo, and VCU, Moneyline Parlay, bet 10 bucks, win back 13, whatever. Um... As always, you can find the picks over at winningcureseverything.com. Go up to the navigation bar, click on gambling picks right there. Or if you're watching the video, just go into the description, whether it's on YouTube, Facebook, whatever. Go down to the description, and you can click on the link for the gambling picks page. Hi, it's been a fun week. Crazy stuff ensuing, of course. Next week, we got conference tournaments, big-time conference tournaments coming up. Cannot wait for that. We are looking forward to it. I hope all of you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for supporting the show. Share this thing out. Tell your friends about it. You uh, Subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe to the podcast. Leave comments. Leave some reviews. Leave five-star reviews. Tell everybody how much you love it. We, uh, we appreciate you guys. We will see you again next week. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.